Hi and welcome to the Class Dynamics tutorial. I'm trying to make a very quick tutorial. Uh, the last one was a bit longer. <laughs> okay, so now let's get going. I am. Um, that's basically the same tutorial from the long tutorial, but a bit quicker. Okay, so um, I installed the Class Dynamics here, and um, you have to check if the shaders are correctly imported. So if the shader graphs, shaders are not reported correctly, just uh, select them all and go here and press re-import. Um, you also have to check the shaders in the uh, GPU skinning um, folder and they are also the same, just select them and re-import them. Okay, and this should be fine for now. Um, also there uh, might be some materials um, that are wrong in the example. I will try and fix them the next um, build, the next uh, release and um, uh, for now you can also just set all the materials to HR, uh, HDRP um, lit and this it doesn't really matter it will change automatically anyway um, but when you have turned it on then you can adjust the parameters of course okay so um, let's get going um, at first we want to um, use the skirt here as a cloth so um, what we can do we can get this um, GPE plus dynamics um, component then you can see here the um, voxel grid if you want to use that um, and um, yeah next we um, we want to add an automatic bone sphere. <coughs> this automatic bone sphere um, can be used to create um, uh, spheres from bones as you can see here and I will lock this here and um, as I know that there are some bones one is from, from the belly up that we don't need that so we can go to the ignore bones list at this here this case is German. In this um <coughs> this hierarchy there are some German words so that's why I have to use them. But the the model is not from me, it's uh it's not created by me, it's um it's from a blend swap a blender a website uh, from free um free characters. Okay, um then we want to use the draw um round cones. You can see them here when you select them. Uh, we can also hide the bones and then we can adjust um, the amount of uh, round cones we want to use and then we can just convert them and they will automatically, when you press OK, they will automatically send to the um, to the cloth and um, here we are um, we have added them here and then um, yeah that's basically it and uh, one thing we should need to well we should add is the um, the um, uh, painting the, the, this mesh is already has vertex color on it but if, if you don't have vertex color on it you can um, just paint the area you want here and we can also blur the vertices a bit so and I think that's fine okay and um, yeah you can just try and test it uh, this, uh, it's already working yeah so it's already working here we already see that the cloth is moving moving but um, yeah we should uh, also add the floor for the collision and um, we can also add the mesh as an extra collision object um, it's the body and yeah update mesh object this means it will automatically add a GPU skinning object here and it basically replaces the skinning. Okay, um, 
So that's it. I think we were just using the vertex collision because our mesh is also already very detailed here as you can see. So we yeah think that's fine. And we should increase the voxel grid. Should be a big bi a big um bigger, yeah, like this. Okay, we can try this. So huh this does look quite good. We can also um turn off the primitive the round cones if we don't want to use them. In this case I think we don't need them. And yeah, sometimes it's um in this case we might have uh well we should have used them, but instead of the um the primitive um, ground cones we can also use um, our surface push and it will pu try to push the vertices away from the body mesh and yeah so already looks quite good we can increase the the push value or increase it here a bit blend it more to the um, skinning points on the skinning direction. I think 50 is still okay. Um, we can also use the normals and yeah we can al still adjust the, the the voxel grid. But I think um yeah this is okay. Maybe we just try higher value here. So this is basically uh, the size, the scaling of the of the spheres, pushing them also. Um Okay. Um Yeah. Yeah, this looks better. I think actually it really depends on the the voxel grid for the for the mesh how it looks. Um or we um also this might also affect um the quality. In this case I think it l will look better if we turn off predictive contact. And yeah. I think that's that's much better now. Yeah. I think we can scale them because also this uh, if you scale it too high this will also affect the performance so let's have a look now yeah yeah so and if of course we can now um combine combine it with the with the primitives and um, scale them down. This is the bias is just um, pushing them off a bit more, and yeah, I think together it really looks quite promising. And um, yeah, we should uh, copy the component safety as well as there. Are there are also some great tools out there that where you can save the um, in the asset store. We can save the the values. So basically just now putting in these values and I will use the triangle mesh and um, so still this might affect the performance here but it of course looks a bit better and uh, um, what we can do also to improve the performance is um, we can also paint the um, the body, uh, not the skirt. The body. We have to add a. We have to add this um, component here, and then we can paint it. And you you should. Um, it's easier when you turn off all of these. Um, oh, it's already painted, so that's fine. 
I just blurred a bit on the edge here. And yeah, I think that's it for now. Um, so basically this means um, red is, um, these vertices are affecting the collision. Also, we could also um, remove some vertices. Black means it um, will not affect the simulation. So yeah, this should be, this should be fine, yeah. And yeah, w with all you can remove, and normally it will add in the by the radius of the sphere. And yeah, that's it. I think so. We can now go back and we can can turn off these here. We can have a final look and. Um, performance say so for HDRP I think that's not a bad performance normally when you use built-in or universal render pipeline the performance should also be of course a bit better because um, HDRP has a lot of um, um, other shaders in the background that of course um, will also affect the performance like this volume lighting and stuff and um different um shadow settings but uh, all in all this um, i think this is uh, quite good so see you in the next video when i go into more detail thanks again and have a great day